Our aim is to get the court to invalidate the licenses that the government has handed out, which will set a very important precedent for how much environmental damage a government is allowed to do while they know it is wrong. We think that there is really no legal basis for the claim. If they should find in favor of the main arguments of the plaintiffs, then that would be a prohibition on any major emission of uh, carbon from, from Norway. So that would uh, obviously have tremendous effects on Norwegian industry in general. So let's go to Norway now and speak to Catherine Banet. She's an associate professor of petroleum and energy law at the University of Oslo. Uh, Catherine, great to have you on Money Talks. Now, Greenpeace says Norway's government is violating the 2015 Paris Climate Accord and that that is the basis for their lawsuit. Do they have a strong case? They do have a case uh, in terms of development of the case law internationally because we see that there is an increase, a, a global trend in terms of climate uh, litigation. But this case, you have uh, to uh, really remind that it is a two-level case. Uh, there is first the domestic question uh, of the interpretation of a new reinforced environment provision in the Constitution, which is paragraph 112. And on the other side, you have more of the influence of the international climate litigation and how potentially the uh, case law can change national climate policy. OK, Catherine, what would be the legal consequences if Greenpeace wins? Could it, for example, set a precedent in other parts of the world and make it harder for oil exploration in ecologically sensitive areas? No, absolutely. Uh, it's, it must be said first that it will be a, a hard, uh, hard decision, hard to, to, to win that case. Uh, but uh, if they win, that is clearly uh, first a question of uh, uh, interpretation, uh, a strong interpretation of a legal provision in the Constitution that guarantee individual rights uh, in terms of protection of the environment for future generation. And not least, the fact that climate science must be taken extremely seriously. And we have, uh, in terms of uh, climate change uh, policies and what the government is committed to do. And we have seen some elements of that already in uh, previous decisions. You have, for example, in the Netherlands, the very now well-known uh, case, uh, Uganda from 2015, which is on appeal, and which uh, contained prescriptive decisions towards the government to act and to change its climate policy. You have a decision in Pakistan as well from 2015. And just at the beginning of the month in New Zealand, the High Court came with a similar decision. So we see that by reaching such a decision, if the first instance in Oslo does, then it will just confirm that uh, case law. Mm. Now, Norway is making a big push, of course, towards renewable energy for domestic use, but much of the government's funding comes from the export of oil. How do the people of Norway feel about this discrepancy? Mm. Um, well, I'm a lawyer, so I, I here I have to, to give some uh, general comments of what the population may think, but uh, it is clear that for example, the uh, drop in oil uh, price has made people and companies realize that they need to diversify their economy. And people having jobs uh, connected to the petroleum industry are very well aware of now that need to diversify. And then the uh, companies uh, would 
petroleum companies, oil and gas companies are so diversifying their um, activities. We see that Statoil is moving towards an energy company as Dong is doing as well in, in Denmark mm. and changing the name. I see. And uh, we, we see as well uh, that the population um, is very well aware right. of that energy transition. Okay, thank you very much indeed for your time. I'm afraid we are out of time, but Catherine Banet there from the University of Oslo, thank you.